a new session of the Laplace transform. So in this session we shall be discussing about the initial and the final value theorem of the Laplace transform. So what do you mean by initial and final value? So the initial and final value are related to the limits that is whether the limit is tending to 0 or whether the limit s is tending to infinity. So we can see here that the initial value theorem. If we have the Laplace of the function is f of x and if the limits are existing then the limit t tending to 0 f of t is equal to limit s tending to infinity s of fs. Means for the initial value theorem we have the limit that the t is tending to 0. This is the initial condition since in the definition of the Laplace we have the limit integral 0 to infinity e to the power minus st ft of dt. So this is the basic definition of Laplace of f of t. Since the lower limit is 0 and the upper limit is infinity so from the limits we have defined the initial and the final value. So we can see here in the statement that the t is tending to 0. So in the initial value theorem the limit t tends to 0 f of t but the limit in the s is tending to infinity. So you have to remember that for the initial value the t is tending to 0 and the limit s is tending to infinity and it is s times of fs. So let us now see the proof of the theorem. Just be remembering that this s times fs was coming in the term when we took the Laplace of the derivative of the function. So in the proof we shall start with the Laplace of the derivative of the function itself. So in the proof you can see that Laplace of f dash t is s times Laplace of f t minus the function value at t equal to 0 that is f of 0. So we have now applied the definition of the Laplace instead of f t what we have replaced since it is f dash t so we have replaced the f t by f dash t. So we are writing 0 to infinity e to the power minus s t f dash t dt which is s f s for l of f t we can write l of f t is f of s. So we have written s into f of s minus f of 0. So now since you can see in the theorem statement that with s f s what limit is associated? The limit is s tending to infinity. So we have taken the limit s tending to infinity on both the sides. So taking the limits we get limit s tending to infinity 0 to infinity to the power minus st f dash t dt which is equal to limit s tending to infinity s f s minus f 0. So the limit will be applied on the bracket which contains s of f s minus f 0. Now the limit can be taken inside the integral and since the limit is on s tending to infinity and we have two terms here e to the power minus st and f dash t. But only the exponential term is consisting of the s variable f dash t is not consisting of s variable. So the limit s tending to infinity will be associated only with the e to the power minus st term. So what we get? We have limit s tending to infinity e to the power minus st we have associated limit with only exponential term into f dash t dt and here also you can see that the limit s tending to infinity will be applied here only because s f s contains the s variable f of 0 means it is f of t at t equal to 0 it is not consisting of s so the limit is not applicable on f0. So it is limit s tending to infinity s of fs minus f of 0. Now when you apply the limit s tending to infinity on the exponential term what happens? You will put s is equal to infinity and you know e to the power minus infinity or anything raised to power minus infinity is 0 because this is equal to 1 upon e to the power infinity 
which is equal to 1 by infinity and this is equal to 0. So, if this term is 0, so 0 multiplied by f dash t is again 0 and the integral is also 0. So, this whole term vanishes. So, this whole term is equivalent to 0. So, we are left out with only these two terms and because there is a negative sign on the right hand side and the left hand side is equal to 0. So, we can say that limit of s tending to infinity s times fs is equal to f of 0 and we know what is f0? f0 is the value of the function t when t is tending to 0. So, in this way we have proved the result. This is what we were expecting from the statement of the theorem that when the limit t is tending to 0, the function is equal to limit s tending to infinity s times fs. So, we have proved the theorem and this is the initial value theorem. Now, let's come to the final value theorem. As I have already told you that the Laplace of the function is defined by integral 0 to infinity e to the power minus st ft dt. So, the upper limit is infinity for t. So, the final value also has this limit value that now the limit t tending to infinity f of t is equal to limit s tending to 0 s times fs. So, the basic difference between the initial value and the final value is that that when the limit here in this theorem was t tending to 0, the s was tending to infinity. But in the final value, the t is tending to infinity and s is tending to 0. So now again let's begin the proof. Again we see that here is s of fs and this s of fs is associated with the Laplace of the derivative of the function. So Laplace of f dash t is equal to Laplace s times Laplace function t minus f0. L of ft can be written as f of s. So it is s fs minus f of 0 and we can apply the definition of the Laplace of the f dash t. So we can write this as 0 to infinity e to the power minus st f dash t into dt. Again we see that s f s was associated with the limit s tending to 0. So we take limit s tending to 0 on both the sides applying the limit s tending to 0 on both the sides. So we have limit s tending to 0, 0 to infinity to the power minus st f dash t dt which is equal to limit s tending to 0 s f s minus f of 0. Now again since we have to apply the limit on the variable s and s is only associated with the exponential term that is e to the power minus st. So, we associate the limit with e to the power minus st and f dash t dt is outside the bracket of the limit. Here again we see that this f0 is not containing the term of s. So, it is independent of the limit. So, the s tending to 0 limit is applied on s fs. So, now we have to substitute the limit s tending to 0 on the exponential term. When we substitute s is equal to 0, anything raised to power 0 is what? Anything raised to power 0 is 1. So, 1 times f dash t is f dash t. So, we are left out with the integral that 0 to infinity f dash t dt is equal to limit s tending to 0 s of fs minus of f of 0. Now we can solve this integral. So integral and differentiation cancels out. We have to apply the limits. So we have f of t 0 to infinity. Applying the limit we get f of infinity minus f0 upper limit minus lower limit. So it is f infinity minus f of 0 which is equal to limit s tending to 0 s of fs minus f0. Now this f0 and this f0 gets cancelled out. So, we are left out with two terms. So, for f of infinity, we can write, we know that f of infinity means the function t at t tending to infinity. So, for this f of infinity, we have written the term limit 
t tending to infinity f of t which is equal to limit s tending to 0 s of fs. So this is the proof of the final value theorem. We have come to the point that limit t tending to 0 ft is equal to limit s tending to 0 s of fs. So this is the proof of the final value theorem. I hope you have understood the initial value theorem as well as the final value theorem. Let's look at one of the problem of the initial and the final value theorem. The question is that if the Laplace of the function is defined such as it is 1 upon s into s plus beta, we have to find the value of the f of t at t tending to infinity means we have to find the value of the function at infinity. So since you can see in the question that the limit here is t tending to infinity. So we have already discussed in the initial and the final value theorem when the limit of t is tending to 0 we have to apply the initial value theorem and when the limit t is tending to infinity we will have to apply the final value theorem. So applying the final value theorem, the final value theorem states that the limit t tending to infinity f of t is equal to limit s tending to 0 s times f of s. So we have to find the limit t tending to infinity f of t. Now we are given Laplace of f of t. So this Laplace of f of t is what? This is f of s. So f of s is equal to 1 by s into s plus beta. So in the f of s we substitute 1 upon s into s plus beta and this s is multiplied with s with f of s. So we get s upon s into s plus beta. So this s and this s gets cancelled. We are left out with 1 upon s plus beta. So the resultant is limit s tending to 0 1 upon s plus beta. So what we get? We get by putting the value of s equal to 0 we are left out with 1 by beta and this is the value of the function f of t at limit t tending to infinity. So it is limit t tending to infinity f of t is 1 by beta. So this is how you will have to apply the initial value theorem or the final value theorem. You will have to see in the question whether the limit t is tending to infinity or t is tending to 0. If t is tending to 0, you will have to apply the initial value theorem. If t is tending to infinity, you will have to apply the final value theorem. This is how you can judge that which theorem you have to apply.